Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the ROG Azoth mechanical keyboard that was kindly sent over to me by ROG themselves for my honest review. When I received this email, I was honestly very excited because I had heard about this keyboard for quite a while now and I know the first one was met with the mixed bag and the second one had a bit of a better reception in terms of from both the gamers and the mechanical keyboard users of the scene. This keyboard comes in black and white and the main reason why they sent it to me is because the white color is their new variant and it comes with their snow or storm switches. The snow is the linear switch which is what I have here today. Inside the box you get the keyboard itself which already has keycap switches. It's fully assembled and then inside the box underneath you get a wide range of accessories which I think are awesome to be included. Most mechanical keyboards these days, in fact I have not seen any other keyboard other than this one do this, never include a lube brush, lube, a lube station, all while still having the basics switch and keycap puller and of course your wire. Now with that being said, I do think that the switch and keycap puller that they included are some of the worst kinds so I'm glad that they included it but I do really wish they went with a more traditional design where the switch and keycap puller are either A better quality or B kind of that 2-in-1 so the switch and keycap puller are on the same device. This keyboard does support tri-mode connectivity which is Bluetooth wired and 2.4 Hz. It is hot swap. Unfortunately, it is north facing, but that is mainly because, well, they want the RGB to give the best experience here. What that does ruin though is the keycap profile. The keycap profile cannot be cherry profile, which is what is kind of like the standard in the community. And in this case, it is some weird OEM keycap feel where the edges are kind of sharp and they just don't feel good on my fingertips. But thankfully the keycaps themselves are double shot PBT so the quality is definitely there. In terms of thickness they aren't super thick but for a gaming keyboard brand they're thick enough so they should last you quite a while. When it comes to the switch itself the specs are quite simple for you know a standard linear. It has a 40 gram initial force with a total force of 50 3 grams, an actuation point of 1.8 millimeters, and a total travel distance of 3.6 millimeters. Now all of this information can be found on their website, but it is made of a palm stem, a PC top housing, and a palm bottom housing. Another thing to mention is they did feel pre-lubed right out the box, and when I checked online, they do have a nice lube to them. So the switch feels nice and smooth, and it is very light, so if you're wanting something heavier or you are a heavy typer these might not be the best option for you so I definitely check out their website to see their other switch options to make sure that the switch you're buying is the perfect one for you. With all that being said the one thing I have not mentioned yet is the price point and there's a reason for that. This keyboard while it does have its nice features, great RGB, great switch as well and it does have of course that OLED screen and little volume knob on the top right hand corner so a lot of nice quirky features but at the end of the day this is a plastic keyboard with only a metal top chassis and it goes for $249.99 US dollars which is a high price to pay for what you're getting. Now I know it is integrated into their software where you can change all of the settings of the RGB, configure the OLED screen and all of that but at the end of the day, this keyboard is kind of already outdated. When you see other keyboard brands that are making gaming centric keyboards, they have features like changing the actuation force of each switch, rapid trigger mode, 8000 hertz, you know, on the new Wooting 80HE. These features are what I would expect from a gaming focused mechanical keyboard at this high of a price point. With all that being said, here's the sound test you guys can hear how it sounds.
Like I said, at the end of the day, the keyboard right out of the box still sounds good, it feels good, it's just that price point and the fact that it is considered a gaming keyboard that kind of makes me not really want to suggest to buy it. So again, might be good for some people, but for me personally, I do think it is lacking in certain areas to make it worthy of being considered a great gaming mechanical keyboard. I'll be leaving a link to it in the description below if you want to check it out. But let me know what you guys thought about the ROG Azoth in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.